Return of the Witch Lord uh, quest line, which I'm currently running. Um, it is uh, old PDF form, so I'm able to bring those maps up. Um, so the monsters that are in this uh, particular quest line is Chaos Warrior, Mummy, Skeleton, Zombie, and if we go to uh, the others, we have a Ghoul and a Phantasm. Okay. So let's go to uh, the first things first. So we'll move this aside. So let's uh, pick on our uh, Chaos Warrior friend first. So Chaos Warrior has 7 movement, 4 attack, 4 defense, 3 mind. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 7 movement, 4 attack, 4 defend, uh, 3 body, and 3 mind. Let's get things right, people. Let's get the right. So, <clears throat> um, and it says, when defending, each black shield uh, consists of an extra skull. Uh, so, when he attacks, he does extra damage. Very, very dangerous. Especially considering that he attacks with four combat dice. So, he may be uh, average for body at three, but his attacks hit like a truck. So if he hits like four skulls, you know, five skulls, uh, it's brutal. You're looking at almost a almost a guaranteed wipe of a character that has only four, five body points. Because they can move seven, their movement is over half of a 1d6, so that's decent. Um, <clears throat> being in a room with more than one of these is a chore. So I'll give you an example of uh, what not to do. <laughs> so the wizard who has only four body points, uh, decided to go off on his own and open the door, <clears throat> exposing himself to three chaos warriors. Now, that's just waiting for death. Because, let's say, and I go in initiative order for my game, so, like a um, Pathfinder or a D&D &D session, I actually do uh, get my players to roll a flat 1d20 to see, you know, who goes first and ties and all that. Monsters do the same. So, uh, that way there's a turn order of who goes first to who goes last. I like it. It works. Um, so, anyway, the wizard initiated combat. <clears throat> because he stepped into the room and there were the three uh, Chaos Warriors to deal with. Where were the other heroes, you might ask? Well, they were far away because a wizard went off on their own. Bad mistake because if you're thinking about it, <clears throat> on your turn you can do an action and you can move. With three Chaos Warriors in the midst, let's say they roll back to back to back in the initiative order and they're going after the wizard who goes first, let's say, you're having four, eight, twelve attacks coming at the wizard during that situation. And even if the Chaos Warriors in this, let's say, that using this room as an example would be a way, let's say that he was here, you know, they're still going to move. Seven spaces to get to the wizard and attack. Twelve attacks on, against the wizard, you're guaranteed death. Like, 
even uh, he has to be really lucky that they miss hitting him four times. Basically, that's what happened. The uh, Chaos Warriors got got really good rolls. The wizard died, <clears throat> and that was it for that character. <clears throat> so the Chaos Warrior by itself is a nasty customer, especially because it can do extra damage. Let's bring him back up. With that extra damage that he does, I've, I've been lenient with that rule so far. Um, in the first three quests, not adding that extra damage just to get the players into things, that's my call. Okay, but if you clearly see the card on there, it does extra dice damage. So that will be impl impl implemented <laughs> um, down the road. Um, I think my players are comfortable now in knowing how the game plays. So Chaos Warrior is bad news, especially when there's more than one. Uh, they hit like a truck. Their body can be whittled down with certain cards um if heroes are fighting one and they're together which should be all the case there there's a better chance to beat him without mm, too much trouble and wasting a lot of cards <clears throat> because the barbarian given a uh, finding a good weapon can whittle it down and <clears throat> then the other uh, classes can finish them off. So that's the uh, Chaos Warrior there. Next on our list, we're going to look at the mummy. Oh, let's look at our mummy here. Oh, the mummy here. So the mummy <clears throat> moves four, attacks three. Defense of four, body points of two, <clears throat> and zero mind, which is very important because certain cards um, that do mind stuff, the mummy uh, can be very susceptible to that. <clears throat> so the thing to watch out for the mummy is that it has four defense, which is hefty. Um, so it can defend itself pretty good. It has, uh, body points of two, which isn't terrible, uh, you know, like, as far as the heroes go. Um, <clears throat> so, <sighs> its caveat is, uh, I haven't been using its super ability. So it can move through walls and furniture, apparently. I, I don't know if that makes sense to me, so I haven't been using it. <clears throat> I've just been using it as just a straight-up mummy. Um, moving through walls doesn't make sense for me for a mummy. It's a solid matter creature, so I have not been using that. Um, but... <clears throat> Its movement is slow, so that's kind of a bonus for heroes that can kind of like range attack it. <clears throat> it has two uh, body points, which can be whittled down pretty good. Obviously, if there is a bunch of them, it could be trouble because uh, they do have three attack. So three attack is nothing to sneeze at. Um. But overall, the mummy uh, <clears throat> is less, obviously, less of a threat than the Chaos Warrior. So, so far, the mummies have been dealt with pretty good. Um, mainly the Cleric has destroyed a lot of mummies, uh, along with the Barbarians. So, they have not been a huge threat, um, as... I'm ignoring their ability to walk through walls. It's just silly, um, I find. 
moving on. We're going to go with zombie now. The zombie can move five, which is funny. Um, there's one above the mummy, but anyway. As um, two attack, three defense, one body point, and zero mind. Again, we're very susceptible to mind stuff, mind cards from the heroes, as the mind is nothing. Has one body point, so yeah, sneezing at it will kill it, pretty much. <clears throat> so. The mummy's um, special ability is reducing damage, but I haven't been using it um, quite yet. <clears throat> um, this may mainly for uh, it's just a zombie. Um, <clears throat> the special abilities on any monster that you use in your game. It's up to you whether you want to implement them or not. Uh, maybe you could think of it this way. <clears throat> you have, let's say, a Chaos Warrior that is type 1. So he doesn't have that special ability of doing extra damage. Then you may have a Chaos Warrior type 2, which has that ability of doing extra damage. So you can play with that. <clears throat> on your board throughout the quest line, depending on how long it is. Um, if it's campaign size, it's a perfect opportunity to, to try that out, um, see if it works for you. Uh, but always let your players know <clears throat> what a monster can do. Uh, I have this open to players so they can see what these things can do. In the original uh, Hero Quest, the Chaos Warriors did have uh, spells that they could do, which was insane. They've changed that now to just doing extra damage. Um, I haven't seen a Chaos Warrior specifically that can do spell-related stuff, because there's other creatures that can. So, <clears throat> But anyway, the, the, the zombie... It's a zombie. It's nothing too fancy. It's got the two attack. The three defense on it is there. Um, but <clears throat> um, one body point really. Uh, obviously, if there's more than one, then they can become threatening. But one body point, you have a weave spell or something like that to wipe them out. They're pretty much done. Moving on. So, the skeleton here. Same situation as the mummy. <clears throat> um, the skeleton gets a uh, plus one de defense against ranged attacks. So that's very interesting there. So like a ranger would have a little bit more of a tough time trying to hit it. But the skeleton has uh, six movement, two attack dice, two defense, and um, one body point and zero mind. <coughs> Not difficult. Um, even with, like the zombie and skeleton are pretty much the same in terms of health wise obviously um, the zombie gets one more defense than the skeleton um, the skeleton is only maybe a, a little bit more of a threat to obviously ranged attackers but you know against melee types they're done so yeah they're not they're probably the less threat in the uh, Return to the Witch Lord campaign than others. So, that's the Skelly. I'm going to move these guys over here. Bring that up. So, 
of the ghoul right here. The ghoul is six movement, three attack, three defense, one body point, and zero mind. So I would put the ghoul up with um, the mummy. It doesn't have a special ability. So it's just basically a uh, mummy without wrapping on it. <laughs> <clears throat> That six movement isn't bad. Um, the three, uh, I, I think that any monster with more than two defense and two attack is average. Anything four and above for attack and defense is definitely something to look at and be um, weary of as a hero uh, because you have to think about if there's more than one. Just think of those attacks if that hero gets surrounded. Chaos Warrior has four attacks. That's four times however many Chaos Warriors are around that hero, right? So, like, even monsters with three attacks, that's three times three times, you know. So, with Undead, the Cleric has an ability card that can wipe out in a 4x4 four four area any undead that are lesser, they're not bosses. So that won't work for a boss, but definitely would help in this situation where you're being surrounded. I, I find that card is used too quickly, and I myself, as a player, would save it for a dire situation, like hmm. one of the heroes is about to be bombarded by a skeleton, right? Or a, even a ghoul. So... Ghouls are a better zombie. They're up there with the mummy, but they don't have any special traits. And finally, we go on to the phantasm. So the phantasm is deadly, even though they have two body points. Because <clears throat> they have eight movement. Five attack, which is one more than the Chaos Warrior. They only have two defense and two body points, zero mind. But they can move through walls. They can move through furniture and everything. As you can see, uh, physical weapons only deal damage on black shields, which is insane. So you're rolling those stalls, they don't work. You got to roll the black, black shields on the dice to hit them and on top of that the um, targets that are damaged by the phantasm lose an attack dice so if your wizard say has two attack it's down to one and that's even worse so because of the the danger here of the abilities on top of the five attack dice and the Hefty 8 movement, Phantasms, more than one is pretty crazy. Yes, they have two body points, but they can move through and chase. So a door in their face won't stop them. So, um, the players handled the Phantasms really well. They knew what they could do. They were... Basically, with the Barbarian being um, the tank, was dealing with them. Luckily, the Phantasms don't have a... Other than the, the Black Shields, but the that Barbarian can hit um, pretty good. So they were dealt with the Barbarian. Um, for any hero that has one attack or something like that, the, the, trying to take out a Phantasm by themselves is tough so spells work in this case the cleric undead killer card would probably be good um, in that situation because um, the phantasms attack of five and more than one considering that would be a huge threat because you have even two and that's ten attacks on the hero right so that's 
Is that their step up of the Chaos Warrior in terms of attacks? Uh, the Chaos Warrior is there on the same, almost the same level, except obviously the Phantasm can move through walls where the Chaos Warrior can't. So that is um, the monsters in the return of the witch lord some more threat than others um, <clears throat> so far the heroes have been really lucky in getting potion rolls and finding weapons in their treasure find um, they've been rolling really well with that <clears throat> um, however their their last quest Ended in um, the second character death, which was the wizard, because, as I explained, they went off on their own and kind of bought it. <clears throat> um, but prior to that, the shaman went down um, because of the same situation where they went off on their own and they got surrounded by enemies. Hero Quest is kind of like uh, the rule in pushing. Um, the same idea, idea of sticking together as a group to take out threats. Um, Hero Quest, the board game, is no different than Pathfinder in that sort of train of thought. Okay? If you go off on your own in really any adventure game, you're asking for trouble because the whole point of a group game is to stick together and deal with things together. Originally, it was interesting that Hero Quest was a designed free for all. Um, they had an idea that they were going to do a fantasy game like this, but where the heroes kind of every person for themselves. But of course, that idea didn't work well at all, um, as they realized, like, yeah, it's not happening. And then, kind of like molded this group cooperative dynamic into the system and here we are so those are the monsters for the uh quest line i'm currently doing now campaign i should say um they are on their fourth quest but they have lost two characters and the cleric almost bought it um, so now here's a situation with the cleric that will, I'll kind of leave up to you as a decision because you're the GM or Zargon in quotations, but heroes were in their last room. They have fought phantasms. There were two of them and a couple of undead and there was one chaos, uh, one chaos warrior, no, two chaos warriors but they were handled properly and the cleric went down but they were near the exit okay so because of this i kind of I made it my call where since they're near the exit they are able to uh, get the cleric to kind of safety and sort of keep them alive and i um, asked the cleric player uh if he would Keep, like to keep the cleric player or choose another hero. Uh, because they're, I just uh, had that scenario where like they're near the exit and they can heal them up. Because everybody, re everything resets between quests. Cards get uh, readied. Um, health, body points go back to normal, all that stuff. So the. Cleric player decided to ask the group if that was fine, if he continued as a cleric, or would he, would they like to choose another, and they kept with the cleric. So I let that happen only because they were near, they were right at the end of the quest. That will be your call as, Zargon, as the Zargon GM player when it happens. Normally, obviously, when a hero goes down in hero quest, they're dead, and that's it. But in that situation, uh, it was my call. 
uh, with the wizard and shaman character cases, they were on their own and no real the the heroes wouldn't get there to really they had healing ability um, but not not uh, for a situation they thought where the hero was by themselves and monsters just went to town on them so that is your call in your game you're running you can come up with kind of like these little house rules perhaps to sort of add to the experience of the board game so that's just something that i will uh, end this video off with um so uh we'll see you in the next hero quest video